OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, how we configured our Envoy to use a whole bunch of memory. And it turned out to be all of our fault. Uh, so I'm Steve Sloka. Uh, I work at VMware. Um, quick little bit about me, if you haven't met me before. Um, I've been working on Kubernetes for a while now. Uh, I help contribute to Kubernetes. Uh, I work on Contour and Gimbal at VMware. Um, I've got my certifications, and I help run the, the meetup in Pittsburgh. So if you're interested in speaking in, in Pittsburgh, PA, come see me. Always looking for speakers. Uh, so this was the issue that got opened up. So this is opened by Matt Alberts. He's one of the users of our, of our, of our of Contour. Um, this is issue 499, so kind of early in the Contour days. Um, and he said, hey, I've seen some memory issues while adding and removing ingress. And the TLDR of this was that Envoy was using a lot of memory. So as a maintainer of Contour, um, you know, I run it on my machine. I run it locally. But um, you don't always get to see you know, a, a real production system. You know, the Contour team, uh, it's, we're just an open source project. Um, and it's nothing like running a real production system. We can run performance tests on ourselves, uh, but those are scripted, right? It's nothing like having real use cases, real users, real, real software running through. Um, so we haven't really seen Envoy using lots of memory before. Um, but we looked at some graphs, and this is what showed up. So on the left, if you can't see, um, there's uh, the, the y-axis has uh, memory. And it goes from 0 to 16 gigs. And at the bottom, you can see we have time. So it's 8 AM to 6 PM, so the core business hours of any kind of day. Um, and you'll see memory scaling up to 16 gigs of memory and then dropping off down to 0. Um, and we'll explain here in a minute why this happens, but this is kind of my teaser as to what we saw as, as, a, you know, as an issue getting opened up in GitHub. Um, so if you're not familiar with Contour, Contour is an ingress controller for Kubernetes. Uh, so its goal is to help you know, manage traffic in your, in your cluster, uh, abstract ingress configuration, work with teams, um, you know, and do header and path-based routing for Kubernetes. Um, this is how it's architected. We obviously use Envoy under the hood as our, as our data path component. So all traffic routes through Envoy. Uh, Contour is the ingress controller in Kubernetes. So its goal is to go watch the cluster for services, for endpoints, for ingress objects, secrets, all those sort of things. When anything changes in that setup, then um, Contour will then stream that data down to Envoy. And Contour is the XDS server for Envoy. So in this, in this world, the gRPC connection is between Envoy and Contour. Uh, we give Envoy enough bootstrap just to go back, basically talk back to, to Contour. So this is the, the general overview. Uh, this may work also for any kind of ingress controller you might see out, out, out in the market. Um, so this here is a little more detailed view of that, of that same implementation. So again, at the top, you can see those are all the things we watch for in Kubernetes. So again, services, secrets, endpoints, all those sort of things. Um, we put a watch on the Kubernetes API using client go. Um, once something changes on the top there, then we'll get that event back, and we'll build a, a directed acyclic graph, or a DAG. Um, once we build that DAG, we go ahead and walk that DAG and basically output Envoy configuration. Again, then from, that information goes down to our XDS server, which Contour is maintaining. And then we, we travel, send the data down to Envoy under the hood. And if you look vertically on those columns, you can see that we have a, a correlation between services and Kubernetes and CDS and Envoy, secrets and secrets, and so on. So you can almost think of Contour as being you know, a, uh, an abstraction layer between Kubernetes and Envoy. It's translating Kubernetes objects into Envoy objects, in a sense. Now, I told you all this just to help you give you background to understand kind of how we want to approach this problem. Um, so here's another picture of that same memory graph. And here, the memory is a little higher. We're using almost 70 gigs of memory, which is kind of crazy. Um, but what's interesting is that we have this linear growth, right? So we have this linear growth, and it tapers off and, and levels off at some point. Um, what we can see here is that um, and any good problem, I'll go back to here, any good problem in computer science, um, you get an issue, you always want to replicate it first, right? So I want to make sure it works on my machine. Um, so what we found when we looked at this issue and how this got built was that there wasn't any traffic in the cluster at all. So it was not traffic related. There was zero requests coming in and out of the cluster. Um, and we also realized that this only happened when we dealt with TLS connections. Right? When we did something with plain HTTP, we never saw this, this, this experience happen. And it was also dealt with whenever we changed configuration. Right? So it was down to the XDS server layer. So when we were pushing updates to Envoy, we saw this memory growth going up, and quite significantly. Um, if you're using 70 gigs of memory in your cluster for just Envoy, that's a pretty big cost you know, in your cluster. So this is how we reproduced it. Uh, we basically started out in a cluster and had zero ingress resources. And then we inserted 5,000 total. And we did that in blocks of 100. After a while, we saw that memory grow. 
and then we let the, this cluster get stabilized. After it got stabilized and they got idle, we would mark down how much memory got used. And then we would go and restart the Envoy pod. And what we wanted to see was, on a cold start with 5,000 objects, what was, memory, what was Envoy's memory consumption you know, versus having it getting configured as we went. So here's a picture of that graph. Right? And here on the left, you can see, again, there's zero objects, so there's zero memory getting used. And then we have, again, that linear growth up and hitting, this, in this case, is 30 gigs, but that number doesn't matter as much. Um, and then you know, everything stabled off, and then we restarted it, and it, it dropped down. So the cold start of Envoy was using a significantly less amount than, than the, uh, the hot version. Um, and again, there was no traffic in the cluster, and this is only when we dealt with TLS connections. Um, so it, looking at the problem, what we figured out was that when we changed secrets, the key there was the TLS connections. So when we modified secrets in Kubernetes, or SDS basically, we caused an update to our LDS, our listeners in Envoy. At a high rate of change, we basically caused a lot of listeners to get created and ended up with lots of old configurations sitting around. So when you create lots of different listeners in Envoy, you end up with a draining mode. And all of your old listeners sit around until they get drained out, which by default is 600 seconds. So if I create 5,000 objects, I ended up with 5,000 different listeners running, all consuming memory and all holding onto it for 600 seconds. Um, again, each listening drainer holds onto memory. So this is kind of interesting, right, to figure this out. Um, again, at, on a small scale, this worked fine. Traffic still routed just fine. It just used up a ton of memory. Um, so back to this picture, right? Um, before we saw that linear growth. Well, in this picture here, it's going up and down. Because once we realized what was happening, our first thing we did was, so let's make that, that draining time smaller. Right, let's go from six, six, 600 seconds to maybe a minute. And that's what our team did. And this is why you see that up and down drop. So we would consume a whole bunch of memory, and the listener timeout would hit, and it would drop. So we kind of solved the problem in a, in, a, in a small way, but we didn't really solve it because we're still consuming all of that memory. But this ended up in that zigzag up and down kind of path. So the current solution, how we're looking at solving this today. I put current because we haven't officially solved this 100% yet, so I think we still have some ways to go. Uh, but the first thing we did to help solve this listener problem was to sort our secrets before we sent them off to Envoy. So before we would just get secrets, however, they came in from Kubernetes, and we would just shove those down the XCS pipe and, and let, let Envoy figure it out. And we found that if we would sort those the same way each time, then Envoy would handle that diff better, and it consumed less memory. Um, don't ignore your acts and acts. So um, we've been using XCS since, probably since it started, and uh, we just never implemented the acts and acts. So it's a good idea to do that. Um, we went and did that, and that helped us out as well. Um, also implementing your discovery requests. So again, in your XCS server, waiting for that discovery request to come through before you respond um, was, was a big help for that. And then something we've had for a while, but batching up our requests. Um, so one thing we saw with, with Contour was that um, Kubernetes will send you lots of events really quickly. Um, what we were doing is we were re rebuilding that, that graph in memory over and over and over and, and flooding Envoy with updates. So we added a, a timeout window. So a way that we can get a whole bunch of requests at once, batch them, and then just process them at a smaller interval. So I think having that, that batched request go through um, was very helpful and beneficial. Uh, so looking back at this, um, you know, this is an interesting problem that, again, we had to find in production, find it with somebody's use case. Um, it's great to have users out in the world to help us out with these things. Um, so interested to see what all you folks are doing with your, with your clusters. Um, so thanks for your time. Um, if you have any time tomorrow, I have a talk again with Envoy talking about doing uh, lots of crazy meshy things without meshes. So hope to see you there tomorrow. So thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Does that mean any questions? Keep going. What was that? It doesn't matter. Keep going. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Will, will SDS solve this? That's your question? Uh, no, I think that we're, we're using SDS today still, and we still had this problem. So I don't think it'll solve it 100% um, because we still trigger the updates to LDS. Yeah. <laughs>